few months ago, I was out of the country in Thailand for my brother's wedding, and we had a really good time. We saw elephants. We did some Thai cooking. Yeah, we saw Thai boxing, which is extremely brutal. And got my brother to the altar, and it's not our problem anymore. It's his wife's problem. <laughs> but when I got back to the United States, I found that there was a new operating system in town called El Capitan. Okay, so of course I installed it. Actually, I did a clean install because my computer was getting kind of slow. And then started installing you know, Apne, FSL, all the stuff I used to use. But there were a couple hitches with installing Apne. And apparently some people have been having this problem. And this video will show you how to do an install of Apne on El Capitan. Okay. So there's no guarantees if you've done a lot of tweaks to libraries and things like that, it may not work. This is assuming you have a clean install of El Capitan. And for this, I'm using, see, plagiarizing, uh, something written by Pete Mofis about how to do this. He's the one who figured most of this out, and I've copied most of what he had on his webpage. So let's get to it, but before we do, gotta say something feels kind of weird. I can't really put my finger on it. Don't know what it is. Okay, that feels better. Now we can get started. Let me first show you what page I'm basing all this off of. So this is Crash Log, Pete Mofiz's web blog. And here are the steps for installing Apne on Mac OS X El Capitan. I've copied the same thing onto mine, just here's the video about how to do it. And what's really cool, something I've never seen before, something called Homebrew, which is a package installer. For those of you who have used Fink for a long time, Homebrew is very easy to use, very quick, and it should be a welcome change from Fink. Now, what we're going to start off on is installing XQuartz. XQuartz. You should probably do this even if you haven't done a clean install, just to get the latest updates. Uh, XQuartz, you can find it here, very simple to install, just like any other package in uh, Macintosh. And this essentially is what pops up, this X in your dock down here, will you launch AFNI GUI, the graphical user interface from the command line in Unix. And that's what you need that for. So that's simple enough, whoops, that's my email. Hope you didn't see too much of that. Uh, install Xcode, this is going to help with the compilers, okay, so translating all these different languages into machine code that can be read. And also installing Homebrew, this package manager right here, okay. I got another email, do not pay attention, resist the urge to look at that. This is the homebrew web page, and you can tell these guys are serious because it's very minimalist, and especially they have their address as just brew.sh. When somebody has a web address like that, you know they're not messing around. These guys know what they're doing. You want to install it, here's one of the easiest ways. This code right here, this assumes you're using the bash shell. All right, so for those of you who aren't entirely sure about what a shell is, just know that Bash, I believe, is the default shell if, say, you've done a clean install. Now, you can change that through the system preferences, but Bash is what you are stuck with at the very beginning. But you can change it by just typing TCSH to get to a T shell. All right, so you can do it like that. Okay, I give you two options here for Bash, you use Ruby. For TCSH, you use curl. Once you have it, you can use this to install a bunch of different packages very quickly, very easily. Again, if you've used Fink, this is, uh, for me, it was a big change because it just seemed a lot more intuitive and I had really no problems doing it. The command is called brew, and you just use brew, then install, then the name of the package that you want to install. In this case, we're going to install the new compiler collection. Again, just a series of compilers to translate different languages to machine code, and with these options with, with all languages and without multi-lib. Again, I'm not exactly sure what these options do. I could check on it, but again, Pete did most of the legwork. We're going to trust him because these things actually do work if you just try it from the very beginning. Next, you can use it to install uh, PyQt and also GLive, which takes care of some lower level libraries. Let me show you what this looks like. I already have uh, GCC installed, all these packages. I'll tell you that brew install GCC takes a long time, so make sure you have your uh, plug plugged in to an electrical socket. There should have been a better way of saying that, but I just went with it. So GCC is going to take the longest time. It may take an hour even. Uh, these other ones are pretty simple. Uh, here's just the basic command line for it. Whoops. I 
so I brew twice. Okay. Again, if you already have it installed, that's it. But this is the basic command. It's very easy to use. Also for glib. Now, this command right here, this libgomp, okay? So we're doing a link, a soft link between uh, one of our libraries and user local and another library that gets installed with brew. Now, right here, this 5.3.0, okay, this may change as this library is updated. So in a few weeks, maybe 5.4.0. So you gotta make sure that this is correct. Just make sure that this path actually exists. If it doesn't, and you actually set the link anyway, then just go back and type in the correct path, but use the SF option instead of S, and you should be good to go. Once you have all that, just go to the AFNI website, download the AFNI binaries, okay? Let's see here, whoops, let me go back down. Okay, just follow this whether you're using T-Shell or Bash, okay? First of all, just download these binaries. You can do this through the command line through curl, or you can also use it just by downloading from a link on the AFNI website. And then you can also do this from your command shell so that AFNI starts up automatically whenever you start up a, uh, a shell. When I say automatically, I mean that now you'll have enough uh, code in your startup script to actually launch AFNI from anywhere. So it shouldn't matter if you type up a new terminal at any point, it can run from any of them, all right? And that's it, it should get you good to go. Okay, now you have El Capitan, you have a new operating system, it's sleek, it's new, it's fast, but you have Avni working with it. And all these steps with the X quartz, you need to do that for FSL as well, that I found out. So once you have that, you should be good to go. And then you'll have Avni. When you absolutely, positively have to analyze every data set in the room, except no substitutes. <laughs>